I like catching pictures. I like doing. I like hitting, hitting. Um, I like batting. My favorite player is Carlos Gonzalez. Carlos Gonzalez, number five. We love Carlos. Carlos, My favorite player is Dino. And that is magnificent. Wow. My favorite player is number two, Troy Tulowitzki. Troy Tulowitzki. 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 Here we go, Tulowitzki. Here we go. Troy, stop. Right between second and third. Go! I play catcher. First base. Left field. I play second. I'm a pitcher. I am a pitcher. I play hitter. I love the Rockies! Go Rockies! Go Rockies! Today we celebrate Little Leaguers, and I'll tell you what, there are a bunch of future Tulowitzkis, Gonzaleses, and Fowlers out there. Frazier's first time actually yeah. playing T-ball, he ran the wrong direction, but they straightened the bat and he had a big league career anyhow. Game three, rubber game, Rockies and Tampa Bay Rays from 20th and Blake. Welcome upstairs, everybody, with my partner, George Frazier, who's running in the right direction these days. I'm yeah, but Drew I Goodman. struck out in T-ball. Go ahead. You did? Yeah, go ahead. That's why you became a pitcher. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's where it all began. <laughs> that's right. Before we get to Little Leaguers and more on our memories of when we were growing up, let's first talk about the uh, order of business today. The Rockies made two roster moves. Todd Helton's back. Julie Chassin's back. He'll start today for the Rockies. Tyler Chatwood was sent back down to Colorado Springs. Ryan Wheeler was sent back down. Well, for Ryan Wheeler, you got to go back down. Todd Helton's coming on. Wheeler can go down and get consistent uh, at bats. And for Tyler Chatwood, he pitched very well while he was here. One and oh, two starts. Don't be surprised if he's not back here pretty quick. If someone falters, someone gets hurt. He's a guy you can turn to now. Yoli Chassin's coming back off of this, but what I thought was one of his better outings against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Very good command of everything, particularly the hard slider. Had to change up working, and all oh, then that happened, and that's when he grabbed the backside of things. And, and fortunately, folks, I'm telling you, if it would have been an oblique, you probably don't see him for four or five weeks. It was a back issue that, that Keith Duggar jumped on immediately. Got it back into the situation it needed to be. He went down to extend it. He went six strong innings in an extended game. I know it's a ball, but no health issue while he was doing that for six innings. Look for a good start out of him today. Well, in his first four starts, he put up numbers uh, comparable with anybody in baseball, a 146 ERA. So it'll be good to see him back out on the field today. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, all the little guys who aspire one day to be Jody Chassi. Little League Day on our Root Sports Broadcast.
leading the National League West. The Rays come in at 13 and 16. Rockies trying to take two of three after beating up David Price in the Rays last night, nine to three. He's got good wheels, George. <laughs> They're fast. Yeah, he's correct. They're moving fast. I don't know if he's going anywhere, but he's moving fast. All right, memories of uh, your Little League days. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of them. I, mean, I played for a guy named Bill Wilson that actually kind of formed my baseball uh, way to play play the game of baseball. I always loved basketball. I spent a lot of time playing basketball in the Little Leagues, but also an awful lot of Little League baseball. And I think today, if I had one message I want to pass to these coaches, they're 8, they're 10, they're 12, they're 13. They're not ready to play in the big leagues or they'd already be there. And I think that's the one thing about it. Teach the game and teach them to love the game, to where they have a passion for the game and enjoy playing the game. And, and, and honestly, at 8, 9, 10 years old, it's not about wins and losses. It's about teaching them the game of baseball and letting them enjoy the game of baseball. A lot of fond memories oh, from those days. Memories. A lot of great memories from uh, way back now. <laughs> easy. <laughs> way it back. It is easy. We are set for baseball. Rockies try to win another series against the Tampa Bay Rays. It's Colorado. It's Tampa Bay. Come on back to 20th and Blake with us. Root Sports is brought to you by your seven neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two-for-one Rockies club-level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies, Wells Fargo Bank, member FDIC. By Frost Fruit Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. And we are ready for baseball. Stepping in is Desmond Jennings. And the first pitch from Jolie Chassin is just out of the strike zone, 1 0 on the Tampa Bay leadoff hitter. And he gets a swing and miss on the 1 0. Game time temperature is 55 degrees. Definitely a sweatshirt or sweater will be in store today. 3 0 record, the 146 ERA. Look at the whip, George, beneath 1. Well, he didn't walk people. 16 strikeouts, uh, you know, and only six walks. He hadn't given, hadn't given up a home run yet, uh, or one home run, I should say, in 24 two thirds innings. So he keeps the ball inside the ballpark. He really controls the middle of the lineup. And what I mean by that, four and five hole hitters, typically RBI guys, are now two for 20 against him. You know, Desmond Jennings started the ball game with a base hit yesterday against John Garland. He is at first base and here's Matt Joyce. And 
Chassis misses there 1 and 0. Joe Madden's team is shorthanded today. Yunel Escobar is day to day with that hand injury that he had x rayed after being hit by a pitch last night by John Garland and Ben Zobrist, who, along with Evan Longoria, their two best players. That misses 2 0. Unfortunately, his grandmother passed away, and he is going to be not with the club for the next couple of days. They did not utilize the bereavement list or have not yet. So they are two players down on their 25 man roster and that's three and up and a much bigger deal being in a National League ballpark than an American League ballpark where you don't see a lot of pinch hitting or pinch running. Double switching. Well, he'll figure out a way to make it work. Joe Madden typically does. Good to see 17 at first base. He was like a high school kid today in the locker room. He was bouncing all over the place. He, he was he very was. excited about playing baseball today. He was, wasn't he? So a leadoff, excuse me, a leadoff base hit, and then the walk on four pitches to Joyce. As Chassin wanted to start, two on, nobody out. As we take a look at the batting order brought to you by Southwest Airlines for Tampa. And it'll be Longoria, James Loney, Kelly Johnson in the middle, then Ryan Roberts in second. Jose Lobaton will be catching batting seven. Sean Rodriguez, who started on Friday at first, is starting at shortstop tonight. When was the last time you saw that? <laughs> first to short, right? Well, you know, you start thinking about it. Zobers right to second to short. He's a multi-talented guy, as everybody else is, too. As uh, Rosario comes out from behind, plate to put on the bunt plays and make sure if that's something that would be really unusual. I don't know why I said that with Longoria up at the plate. But he's got a lot of signs going on with his middle infielders of what they may try to attempt here. Maybe a back pick from uh, Rosario. This is in the air to right. And Kadire comes on, sets the throw. Jennings going to test the arm, throws on line. And not quite in time. And Arenado grabbed it and then eyeballed Joyce at first base to make sure he didn't advance. So it's first and third, one out. A good example of thinking through the play if you're Arenado. In other words, that throws offline. I'm going to check the guy at first immediately to see if he attacked. And here's James Loney. Well, you look at what he likes to do. Most of the time, it's the fastballs change up and then a few sliders. Now he will show a curveball occasionally. The changeup is becoming more prominent. Right now, he's averaging 65.5%. Uh, which that would be at uh, number 17th in the major leagues right now. Ground balls and deuce. So you could look for a lot of double play balls in that situation. I'd like to get one right now. James Loney, three hits last night. Three more hits at Coors Field. Sound like a broken record. He does it every time. See if we can get a double play ball for uh, Loney. Nope, he's going to throw out another base hit, another RBI. James Loney has now driven in 54 runs in his last 55 games at Coors Field. Today's cold hard fact is brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Most RBIs in the game at Coors Field, Sosa and Loney with nine. Eighth career RBI against Chassin. Well, Tampa's used to pretty quick starts. They have scored 25 runs in the first inning this year. That's the most in the American League. Here's Kelly Johnson. And this gets away. And the play at the play. Say, ball came loose. And Tampa has scored two quick runs here in the first. I'm looking at Chassin making sure he didn't get spiked. He's kind of checked his arm a couple of times. A wild pitch by Chassin. Joyce comes home. Let's look at this pitch. Fastball that just totally missed the target of where they're going to. Tough block for Rosario, and it just shoots off the heel of his glove. Remember the short backstop. It ricochet back to you. But, uh, heads up play and a heads up uh, move by the runner. Look at it one more time. That foot just gets under. See Chassin's tag up on the knee. The other foot extended got across the plate first.
you know had had the ball not got kicked out of the glove George I'm not so sure he wasn't out. Doesn't matter ball came out one and zero on Kelly Johnson two runs in for Tampa that's a strike. Let's take a look at where that tag was applied right here. Did he get the extended leg or did he get back to the other. Yeah but the other legs up. Well it came in and I don't know if it popped the corner of home plate and then popped up or what it did. Either way if they could have hung on to it. Made the play a little bit closer. Daylight play and Loney gets back in. Well an inauspicious return for Chassin. A couple of hits a wild pitch a four pitch walk. Involved as well and it's two to nothing Tampa Bay and with one out there's another ribby out there. And a good hitter at the plate Kelly Johnson with men on base this year five for 15. With them in running or in scoring position. And a lot of times the organization likes to send a starter out for two or three rehab starts. In other words, they would go down to double A, make a start, go to triple A, and then come back. And Jolice was throwing the ball so well, felt so good out of the bullpen that he went down and made the one start and extended, went six strong innings in that ball game. They deemed him ready to go, and here he is activated. Here's the 2 2 on Johnson and it's fouled off. Tampa had a 3 to 1 lead in the ball game yesterday. And of course, the Rockies came storming back. Eight unanswered runs when it's going away 9 to 3. And for Tampa, they have blown some leads this year. I think that's the 11th one, isn't it? They've had a lead in the ball game and not been able to hold it. Eleven of their sixteen losses, they've had a lead. Tampa last year won ninety ball games. Three and two on Johnson. And that's a base hit, and that's going to drive in a third run. Clearly Chassin after the two week absence not sharp here in the first inning. 14th RBI for Johnson. And the Rockies have a little hole to dig out of. Looking at the pitch from center field. Let's take a look at that pitch. See that ball starting to run into that fashion away from the hitter. Johnson just did a good job of getting way out to the front side and pulling this ball into right field. The Dyer able to get to the baseball to prevent any more advancement of Johnson, but not prevent the run scoring. Here's something you may not know about Tampa Bay. Robert stepping in. You know they've had success on a small payroll. But did you know over the last five years in the American League, the only team with a better record than Tampa, the New York Yankees? They've had it going. And it's all been based on a lot of pitching, but it's also the, you know, when you get a guy like, and again, they, they've gone out and gotten a lot of players from Toronto, and, you know, Roberts is one of those guys, Johnson, another guy, that they go out and get these guys. But they make sure they're going to blend and, and that's what one thing Joe Madden said to me they're going to blend in with what we're trying to accomplish here. We know that they're going to be a part of this because the nucleus obviously Longoria being the lead lead guy in that. Swung on a miss by. Roberts. Foul tip one and two.
Roberts hitting just 108 out on the road this year, four for 37. This is the kind of guy Tampa likes, a guy who can play a multitude of positions. Talk about Zobrist. Swung on and missed, and Roberts is gone. Chassin gets the strikeout. That's out number two here in the first. And the seven hole hitter coming up, Jose Lobaton, as we take a look at the Excel Energy defensive alignment for the Rockies. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more about Excel Energy. Cargo, Dexter, and Kadir in the outfield. The infield has Arenado and Tulowitzki along with Rutledge and Helton. And Willene Rosario is doing the catching. Rockies will have tomorrow off before the Yankees come in on Tuesday. And Lobatone takes a strike on the outside corner. Bruce Dreckman's calling balls and strikes today. Gary Darling at first, Paul Emel at second, Clint Fagan is at third. Way outside. One and one on Lobatone. There goes Johnson and Rosario's throw right on the bag and Johnson is out. Great throw from Oline Rosario to put down the inning. But a good inning for Tampa Bay as they scored three times against Jolie Chassin. Celebrating Little Leaguers throughout our broadcast today. That's Dexter Fowler. He will lead things off for the Rockies. They find themselves in a 3 0 hole to begin the ball game. And they'll try to get after Alex Cobb, the 25 year old right hander. Here's our starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Walt Weiss for the Rockies has Arenado batting second. Look at this lineup Cargo, Tulo, Kadire, Helton back in there. Rosario with all his home runs batting seven and Rutledge batting eighth and Rutledge is swinging the bat very well and for that matter Chassin likes to swing the bat. Well the right hander Alex Cobb gets the call today against the Rockies. He's pitched very well 35 and a third 255 earned run average a whip at 1.16. He induces a lot of ground ball outs 64 percent of the time ground ball outs. Has a tendency to get the ball up when with runners on base with nobody on the opposition's hit 229. With runners on 306. He got beat up a little bit in his last outing in Kansas City. He lost eight to two. He's you a see, guy that really likes his curveball, I can tell you that. Very good curveball, and he can throw up for strikes. Fastball running range 88 to 93. He'll pitch at 90. 
The curveball, he'll vary speeds from 70 to 76 miles an hour. Bigger, shorter. He could do a lot of things with that. He'll also utilize his changeup. Good athlete. Competitive guy. And that pitch misses away. Changeup, and it's one and one. Yeah, he started quarterback in high school. It's signed to go to Clemson to play baseball. He had some opportunities, George, as you mentioned, quarterback to go and play quarterback uh, in college. He's out of Vero Beach, grew up as a Dodger bat boy. And that's pulled foul past Renee Latchman, who wanted no part of that. Well, you don't get too many cheers unless you dive and catch it anyway. So you're better off letting it pass to get more cheers so the fans can catch it down the line. And you, and you don't want to pull the Tommy Lasorda, the one that happened to him in the no, All Star game. No, that was embarrassing. One and two. Nolan Arenado on deck, then Carlos Gonzalez. 3 0 Tampa Bay. And he went underneath his hands and strikes out Dexter Fowler. What a night for Nolan Arenado last night. This ball driven high and deep left center field. Way back and gone. Grand slam, Nolan Arenado. And he flew around the bases and literally dove into the dugout. <laughs> Arenado, fewest games did his first Grand Slam in Rockies history. Two quicker than Ian Stewart did. And then a ground ball to second. So with two outs and nobody on, that'll bring up Carlos Gonzalez, who also had a big ball game last night. Tampa's defense brought to you by Excel Energy. Make the choices that fit your life, and Excel will provide you the energy to power it. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more. Kelly Johnson, Desmond Jennings, Matt Joyce in the outfield. Longoria, Sean Rodriguez, Ryan Roberts, James Loney in the infield with Jose Lobatone behind the plate. Cargo hit a home run last night, a 440-foot shot to center field. And we thought he hit one out in his last at bat. I'll show you the home run first against David Price. In his last at bat, George, he hit one of the wall in right center field, closer to, to the center field portion. And you know, we thought we thought it was out up here. And so I asked Cargo in the clubhouse today, I said, Did you get that one? He said, he said, I thought I hit that one out. Well, I tell you, I don't know if you noticed, but game time, 55 degrees. And about about the time when he came to the plate, I looked up and it was 42 degrees. I don't know if the cool air, you know, cool air had anything to do with the flight of the baseball or what, but I thought he'd hit it out, too. And that'll be a base hit to right center field for Cargo. And that will allow Tulowitzki to hit here in the first inning. So Cargo continues to swing a good bat. Brought a 318 average into the ballpark. Listen to this, folks, as Tula comes up. 310, 308, 318, 341, 318, 268, 312, 241. Those are the eight batting averages in order for the positional players today for the Rockies. I mean, this isn't April 10th. It's still relatively early. And happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. But it's it's May the 5th. This is game number 31 on the season, and you have a slew of guys hitting well over 300. Very, very potent offense. Could do damage very quickly. I think David Price figured that out last night. A lot of other pitchers have, too. Want Matt Moore the first night. One strike on Tulowitzki, who drove in the first three last night for the Rockies. Said big hits every night. Michael Kadires on deck, and I want to point something out. After the ball game ended last night, remember Kadires slow roller to short that low throw, and he busted it up the line, and he, and he beat it and ended up on second, and, and the Rockies' rally continued, and they ended up blowing the game wide open. That was ruled an error by Zobrist initially. After the game, you have 24 hours as the official score. Cargo takes off, and that's a real wild pitch. That'll be a stolen base because he was going initially. After the game, 
they changed that error to a hit. And here's who it impacted. Obviously, Kadir gets a hit instead of uh, an 0 for, if you will, because of the error. And instead of the five ensuing runs being unearned to David Price, his original line read nine runs, only four were earned. It became nine runs, nine earned runs. Well, his I mean, ERA went up uh, from five and a quarter to almost six and a quarter last night. Well, I mean, it was a fair call, though. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's how Michael Kadire plays the game. See if the Rockies can chip away here with two outs. Right man at the plate. 27 RBIs in 27 games played for Tulowitzki. 406 batting average with runners in scoring position, which is ninth in the National League. Sandoval leads it with a little league number, 515. You know, Troy last year played in 47 games, is probably aware with the injury and the ensuing surgery. And he had 27 RBIs in 47 games last year, and he's got him through his first 27 this year. Who wants tacos? Remember when the Rockies do score seven or more during any ball game? Go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six, and get your Rockies taco special. So uh, perhaps on the way home from the ballpark today. Alex Cobb making his first career start against the Rockies. It's his fifth career interleague start. He's three and one with a 3.00 ERA. All of those starts in Tampa, though. He's never started in a National League ballpark, so when he comes up next inning, it'll be the first time he's had an at bat in the big leagues. Jim Hickey looking on, former Houston pitching coach. The one pitch people always question is the curveball. Will it work at altitude? That's going to be interesting to find for Cobb today because that has been his out pitch. Two two long drive into the crowd foul down the right field line. Two outs, Rockies down 3 0. We're in the first inning. Cargo, a base hit and a stolen base. That's trying to go in second. Trying to go inside the glove. You can see the preset on the split finger. He went after it with two of whiskey. He threw it after a fastball up and he got him to chase. So we'll go to the second inning. Raise three, Rockies nothing.
13 in his return. And it'll be the bottom third of the order for Tampa Bay. Today's sideline report brought to you by the Honey Smoked Fish Company. Secrets in the fire. It's a ready-to-eat superfood. Here's Mark Stout. Mark? Guys, it is Little League Day at the park and Little League Day on the broadcast. And I'm up here in the Root Sports Suite with some of the Little Leaguers from the Monarch Little League up in Louisville. The Brewers are here. The Marlins are here. These guys all 10 to 12. Makes me think about my days with Sunny Bray Little League back in New Jersey. But they're taking in the game. We're talking about BB core bats and composite bats and all that. And I thought I'd give you some more little fun facts about Little League and when it started. 1939 was the origins back in Williamsport, PA. In 1948, the first Little League World Series. As Rutledge makes a great stop and can't get the out at first. First time the Little League World Series was on TV, that was in 1953. And then ABC picked it up in 1960. And I remember from 69 on, Taiwan dominated. 1971, first time aluminum bats were introduced. Do you remember that, Drew and Frazier? I, I do. Because, I do. Uh, I, I remember the transition when I was about eight from, from wood initially. Yeah. And everybody used aluminum bats. Should point out also in, in Little League, the governing body that you see the championship in Williamsport every year for 12 year olds and, and beneath gets a, a ton of publicity. And well, they should. They have a great organization. There are a number of kids, particularly here in Colorado, that play U Triple S A baseball, Triple Crown baseball, um, that employ basically major league rules from from early on, where you know drop third strike, you go, you can lead, and they're stealing, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of um, opportunities for young kids these days, and it's all good. That is scored an error on Josh Rutledge. He made a great stop on the Lobatone one hopper. And then lost the baseball. 27 pitches right now for Chassin. Mr. That, I want to look at that play again. I thought it was pretty close. Rutledge knocks the ball down, pops out of the glove, and then when it popped out of the glove, he recovers and a snap throw to first. I'll see this again. I mean, anytime Todd Helton looks around, he's out. Yeah, he's out. He's out. Foot's not on the bag yet. That's why Todd turned around and looked back at the dugout and then looked out again. Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo gives you a great look at that right there. He was out. Now it's three and one on Rodriguez. And I think you're seeing the effects, George, of the layoff because there have been some bad misses. Bad misses, three one counts. I mean, those are the type of thing, three two counts. Jimmy Wright's sitting there. He's got uh, stopwatches, clickers, all kinds of things, making sure that he looks after this. And if deems he needs to go out, he will. Three and two called strike on the inside corner. Got the pitcher on deck. Bear down here if you're Chassin already trailing 3 0. And ball four. Second walk of the ball game. He walked uh, Joyce back in the first. I'll bring up Alex Cobb. We do Toyota talk in the fifth inning. Here's how you involve yourself. Text the word Toyota followed by your question of 720-720. First time texters will win a free day pass to the Denver Zoo. Courtesy of your neighborhood Toyota stores. The Rockies have set, the, set their bunt defense. Alex Cobb in his first appearance at the plate. In a big league game. And you can back pick to second. Out at second base. Rosario Tulowitzki, great pickup and tag by Troy. And they erase Lobaton. 
Well, How big is that? It's huge, for particularly for Chassin. I mean, it's heads up by Troy to get there, but you also got to watch Rosario behind the plate. Hardly any hesitation whatsoever than a pick and tag. Tudor Whiskey does this as good as anybody. Picking the baseball and then applying the tag, and he is out. Good call by Paul Emmel, the second base umpire. See if they keep the bunt on. No, they have Cobb swinging. Remember we, the, we saw this the other day with Joe Matt. Well, the other day, there was two instances came up with Matt Moore. He swung both times. He was able to pull the ball and advance them. They were softly hit ground balls. You, you know what? You, you hope he swings right here and hits a little comebacker to Chassin. You turn a double play over. Joe Madden's hoping he does do just that. Well, here's a double play ball. And that works out in the Rockies' favor. So uh, what could have been a troubling inning, no problem at all. 3 nothing. to go to the second. Cobb in the second. Well, we always talk about how Kadire has great respect for the game, plays it right. He's old school, tough guy. Well, he's always been a tough guy. Three days before our first game, I was playing kickball in the neighborhood and went to catch one of the ball, the big rubber balls, and snapped my thumb. So I uh, ended up breaking my thumb. Had a nice little cast on, but that wasn't going to deter me. I made sure I was going to keep playing. So I went up there. It was T-ball. So I went up there with one hand and, and started playing the game. So I, it wasn't going to keep me from playing baseball. Frazier, you'd have been out a month. Six. Six months. But I know my dad would have still made me mow around every tree on 25 acres. There you go. With the hand sickle. I didn't know what a weed eater was until I was about 40. Well, Kadire plays the game the right way. That's obvious. And what you know, some people last year when he went through the injuries with the oblique didn't get to play a lot. You'd hear little snippets about you know Kadire didn't do this, Kadire didn't do that. I, I really went deep into his past uh, with the Minnesota Twins, and they all told me you're lucky to have him. Well, here you go. This is a pretty good reason by it right now. You look at those numbers. When healthy, what he's put up, it's been uh, very impressive. Yeah, Kadire's hit 11 of his last 12 ball games. It'll be Kadire, Help, Rosario against Alex Cobb. Rockies have never faced Cobb. Guys look at video before the ball game, but you don't really know until you get in there. I was talking to Dexter Fowler about that, and I said, "Will you take a few pitches, few more than ordinary?" He said, "You know, either that, or he says, or I may just try to fire at the first." 
one I see, and, and well, that's that, what he ended up doing. You know what? They had pretty good luck doing that against David Price and Matt Moore. Firing early and putting some, trying to put some damage together. There's the hook. And that's a called strike. It's 0 and 2. Both strikeouts that he's had in this game have come off split fingers. Interesting to see if he'll go back to that same type of pitch. On Kadir, they asked for the fastball away. On an 0-2 count, want to miss off the plate. He does. Disciplined hitters like Kadir, I mean the Rockies have a lot of them. They're not going to chase the fastball that far off the plate. Two and two. Cobb, since making his debut, his big league debut a year ago, has induced a ground ball 71% of the time on balls in play. That's the highest rate in baseball. And this ball's hammered deep left field. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. Kadir puts the Rockies on the board. The Cuddy Man can. That is number seven. As a veteran hitter, you look for something different from a pitcher to pick off. That he's changing a grip in his glove. Watch Cobb's hand right here. Watch. See how he starts to move the glove? Everything's moving right here inside the glove. So Kadir's watching. They've been throwing splits. Guess what? Throw me a split. This is something off speed. Because a lot of guys that throw the splits will dig their fingers into the glove to try to get the ball farther back on a grip. Pretty obvious there. It almost stopped in the middle of his delivery to get the grip on that split. And as a, as a veteran hitter, Kadir read that beautifully. 0-2 oh on help. Let's look at the swing again on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo. Well, very good low ball hitter, but you can see that ball's running right across about the thigh area. And Kadir, you see that back toss and the slow jog. It's pretty much over. I want to get back to what you picked up, George, on what he was doing in his glove. See, you know, like right there when you watched him throw that fastball to Todd, there was no movement inside the glove. And what guys look for, does the elbow push out away from the body on the split? Does it stay together? What is it doing differently? And so when you sit here to see these things, you're going to be able to watch it as a hitter. See, Kadir's up right here. Watch, see how his elbow's moving, his hand's moving right there. The wrist popped up out of the glove. Hitters see that. Nope, his first at bats, it's coming off the disabled list. And you recall, or may recall, before he had the forearm issue, he was nine for his previous 20 at the plate, including eight RBIs. And this is a bouncing ball to Ryan Roberts. One out. Now, just from a different angle here. See, now watch the, watch the wrist. See how the wrist is kind of flopping? That's what we're talking about on the Mike Shaw server. That's a great shot. You just kind of see that wrist kind of pull up, go down, pull up, go down. You know he's making some kind of an adjustment change because most pitchers will preset a fastball in their glove. They don't preset a split as much anymore as they used to, and those were more out in the open. But they'll preset the fastball. So when you see some kind of movement, it's typically a switch to an off-speed pitch. Zario bounces this one foul. Well, if you're sitting out uh, down the right field line, do you want to see a little bit of a fly to baseball? That's a beautiful. Close to capacity here at Coors Field today. Benny Castilla bobblehead day. The park, the first 20,000. They were stacked outside early this morning. Benny was all fired up this morning, too. Here's the 0-1, but he generally is. There's the curveball, and it's no two count on Willene Rosario with Rutledge on deck. By the way, Kadire with the home run has now produced an RBI in five consecutive ball games. And the Rockies and Atlanta Braves tied for most home runs in the National League with 41 apiece. One and two.
you know, George, you tutor a lot of young pitchers, and I know you spend a good deal of time, and, and certainly at the professional level, and you hope it at higher levels this is talked about. Is whatever you do with your glove, and I think of Ryan Dempster, you know, how he automatically uh -huh. shakes it. You got it's got to be the same thing. I mean, for it's young kids, if you're watching a kid all of a sudden digging a glove, and guess what? Here comes an off-speed pitch, breaking pitch, probably at a young age, well, a younger other, age. And, and a lot of times too, the other side of this is when a guy takes his sign at home plate. It's very easy for a third base coach if you don't have it closed up and you have it opened up. It's easy for him to see in the glove and see a switch. Yell, hey Drew, come on, buddy, get us a base hit right here. Fastball. Hey Goodman, come on, give me a base hit here. Break a ball. So I mean, it's got there's ways you could do this to help your team out. And that's things you look for as a hitter, as a coach, all those different things. Two two. And Rosario hits it high on the right side. The first baseman Loney makes the catch. Josh Rutledge with two gone in a three to one ball game. How, how far did it travel? Is brought to you by AAA Colorado. And Kadir's home run traveled 418 feet. Rutledge has been asked to hit in a number of different spots in the lineup. He's hit in the two hole a bunch. He's hit sixth. He's hit seventh. He's hit eighth. Probably the biggest challenge of all is this spot, George, in the National League. No question. With the pitcher up behind you, you're trying to roll that lineup over so you can get back to the top. Get after it, apply more pressure to them. And, you know, a lot of times young hitters will be put into this position down in the eight hole. Uh, Josh does a very good job in the two hole, but today they ask him to go down. Arenado's hot. I'm going to put his bat up above Gonzalez, see if he can catch a fastball again in the ballgame. Well, outside of the two hole where he's hit beneath 200, he's hitting 291. Four home runs, 10 driven in. Here's the 1 1. And it's on the ground to short. Rodriguez, wild throw into the crowd, and Rutledge will go to second. And George, that, you know, it's not an easy play there for Rodriguez, but with Yunel Escobar down, they don't have a true backup shortstop. You saw Zobris there yesterday, and now you're seeing Sean Rodriguez there, and he has a tendency at times to spray his throws, and he did on his first opportunity today. Well, he takes off. He's on the fly. He's going to jump on this thing. When he jumps, and it's obviously an off balance throw to try to respect the speed of Rutledge, and he misses Loney by a bunch. So, just the 12th error this year committed by Tampa Bay. Chassin's not an automatic out, not by a long shot. Wonder with teams and how you put them together, and why that utility middle infielder who truly can play shortstop is so important. This is on the ground again to Rodriguez, and he takes something off and throws out Chassin. So the Rockies turn the lineup over, and they get their first marker of the game. On an off speed pitch, it was Michael Kadire's seventh jack of the year. Three to one, Tampa.
Rockies trailing 3-1. to one. Jolie Chassin gave up three in the first inning as he returns from the disabled list. Michael Kadire got one back with the long ball in the bottom of the second. And we go to the top of the third. It'll be Desmond Jennings, Matt Joyce, Evan Longoria. Welcome back upstairs. That is not George Frazier. That's our, <laughs> our, uh, our old friend, John Aragoni, who's the president and CEO of the Denver or the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metro, Metro Denver. Denver. How you been? I've been fine. How about yourself? Good. I'm doing great. Oh, the Rockies are playing well. All, all is well. It's a great season so far. And uh, let's have a repeat of last night's game. It's been tremendous. Yeah, the Rockies came from behind last night. Look at Jennings with his second base hit right up the middle. And that'll bring up Matt Joyce with uh, a man aboard. Well, this is the time of year that you have your annual raffle, which raises... Uh, thousands and thousands of dollars for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metro Denver. And, and, and this year, I, I noticed that the home keeps getting more expensive. The prizes are getting bigger and bigger. It's a $3.3 million home or $2 million in cash. And uh, it, it's just been going great. But we've still got tickets for sale, and we're coming up on the deadlines. When is the deadline? The last day to buy tickets is May 17th. May 17th, so we're not that far not away. Not far away. The drawing's on, on June 1st. 300 prizes will be given away on June 1st, uh, possibly the house, cash, but you know, um, there's a trip to Italy. The Rockies can turn this. There's one on the first. Yes. Nope, not quite. Wow. Trip to Italy, a trip to Hawaii, a Mercedes-Benz, 300 prizes, lots of cash, but it's about the kids. And each, just just on the particulars, each raffle ticket's one hundred and fifty dollars. But but if you buy three, it's four hundred dollars, I right. believe. And, yeah. and beyond that, I think if you buy five, you get it for five fifty. That's right. That's right. The, the more you buy, the better the uh, price is, and and you got to be in it to win it. And, yeah. and now's the time to do it. Let me ask you this: Each year, it seems like they're they're bold plans and, and great plans. You guys do so much for the youth of Denver. What's on the on the menu with, with some of the money that's been raised in the past and, and the money that you hope to raise this year as well? Well, we've got a brand new club that's coming out of the ground in Northeast Park Hill. It's the Nancy P. Anschute Center. We're naming it after after Jack Vickers. So we have a brand new club. Uh, the operating expenses are large, and uh, the money that we raise here goes right to programming for the kids. One of the things I always like to point out, John, for those that uh, may not be aware there's a lot of fancy clubs around naturally, but but the boys and girls clubs, I mean, this is not where you have to reach deep into your pocket at all. If you have a son or daughter um, that you'd like to have participate in one of the many activities at the boys and girls clubs, tell people the particulars. It only costs $2 a year. All right. $2 a year to be a member of the Boys and Girls Clubs. We have over 12,000 members. The only requirement is you've got to be a boy or a girl age 6 to 18. Everyone's welcome. And, and it's not just athletic endeavors. It's academic stuff as well, which is Academics, wonderful. healthy lifestyle, and character. We do it That's all. That's great. John, you, you were good luck. That was a very quick game. <laughs> okay. I wish you all the best. It's always great to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you very much. All right. Go support and buy those raffle you tickets. Bet. Support the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs.
Shah Seen. Rockies trailing 3-1. to one. Rockies fans, Root Sports has launched an interactive second screen experience called Game Control. You'll get live, get live game stats, including play-by-play and all head-to-head stats. Feel like interacting? Visit RootSports.com slash Rocky Mountain and click on the Game Control banner to connect. There's what it looks like. And the first matchup of the third inning is Alex Cobb against Dexter Fowler. Dexter got a big bender and swung over the top of the curveball. He struck out his first time. Dex riding an 11-game hitting streak. Hitters will follow pitchers' patterns out of the dugout. He had started a lot of the hitters off with fastballs. Now all of a sudden you're starting to see the bender come out. The big curveball. On the first pitch offering to hitters. Tell you what, he's, got a good, off. he's got a very good split finger. And he's able to rotate it away from left handers. Now most of the time it has a downward move, which it should. And it also slides to the right. So you'll see on the Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo, the big key is see how he pulls with that index finger so the rotation of the ball is going to make the ball move in that fashion. And he gets Fowler for a second time. That's three strikeouts for Cobb. That'll bring up Nolan Arenado. Nolan grounded the second on the first pitch he saw. From Cobb in the first inning. Drops a curveball on Arenado for a strike. Ball to first. Time now for the Coors Light freeze cam. That's good, George, getting his chest over his front side. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. Got the front side up. Going to be firm with that front side. Get the hand back, make the play, and a high five by coach. Can't beat it. Celebrating the little leaguers throughout our broadcast this afternoon. Rockies organization does a great job on Sundays of having little leaguers throughout the area walk around the uh, warning track. It's like a rite of passage in the summer. Thousands and thousands of kids have made that walk around Coors Field and they look up and see three decks and say, man, I'd like to play here one day. All that, by the way, brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Cargo with a base hit, his first uh, time up. And that's on the inside corner, and it's 0-2. Boy, Cobb just doesn't walk people. He doesn't fall behind an awful lot. Very good command of his fastball. Walked only seven coming in and 35 and a third. Trying to go with that fastball on the inner half of the plate again. You better elevate. Yeah, they went down and uh, missed on the inner half. And here's some of the kids earlier today making their way around the warning track at Coors Field. One, two, and Nick foul. Yeah, one thing you notice about Cobb when he does throw his pitches, folks, if you watch at home, he doesn't miss up very often. The one pitch that was up, could I put into the seats? Just the third home run he's allowed, by the way. Well, the Rockies have gotten after Matt Moore, who was 5 0 on Friday night. They beat up David Price, the reigning Cy Young winner in the American League last night. Cobb's one of those guys, George, after you watch him, you just say he knows what he's doing. 
Well, he does. I mean, this is a very, you know, typically young guy, but working the ball back and forth. Bobatone and he both have uh, done a very good job of being able to work the ball back and forth. Now, you know, going away with a fastball here. Right, probably try to sink it. Does and Cargo does a good job fouling that ball off. Auto glass damage called Safe Light Auto Glass 303 287 5000 online at safelight.com. You know, and the big thing about this Rockies lineup, you just uh, very difficult to pitch against. Drew mentioned that all the guys hitting over 300, the RBIs, the home runs, there's not a break. You know, so you don't want to walk cargo then have a guy on base with Tuttle Whiskey up. Left field playable for Kelly Johnson. And a 1 2 3 third inning for Cobb. We'll go to the fourth, Tampa Bay three, Colorado one. Regions Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your local consumer-owned electric cooperative, delivering reliable power, energy-saving tools, and more. Learn more by visiting TogetherWeSave.com. That catch by Dexter Fowler, the save of the week. Rocky took two of three in L.A. That saved a three-run home run. It would have been a three-run home run off the bat of Adrian Gonzalez. James Loney, an RBI single in the first. And that's ball one. Chassin gave up three in the first. Saw the minimum hitters in the second and third. Good breaking ball. You know what? That's the best uh, hard curve ball or slide or whatever you want to call it. He's thrown in the game. They got on top of that one, and again, you thought a little bit of nerves, excited about being here, excited about being active again. You know, when your club's winning baseball games, you want to be on the hill. You want to be a part of what's going on, and when you miss that 15-day span the way Julie's had to do, that you know, everything kind of calmed down a little bit, get back into the perspective of what you're doing, a couple of walks in the game, giving up three runs on 42 pitches as he works here in the fourth. Got a piece. Well, in his absence, Tyler Chatwood made two starts. He threw six innings here against the Atlanta Braves, allowed five runs, four earned, nine hits, walked three, struck out three. It ultimately, it was a rocky 6 5 win at 12, and then he threw six shutout innings in his last outing. So, what I'm sure made Chassin rest easier is that in the two starts he missed, the club won. Right, and I think that's, uh, you know. Strike three, and Loney knew it. 
That's the second strikeout of the ball game for Jolis. Well, after you throw that nasty slider to start things off with, you start to wonder and worry, is it coming back again to that back foot? Running, moving, fastball started, throws the hands and got the strikeout. And this is on the ground a second. Rutledge will throw out Kelly Johnson. I'll just remind everyone that the Yankees are coming to Coors Field Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, make sure you do that. Uh, there's still some pretty good seats available. 303 Rockies or Rockies.com to order Yankee tickets. Ryan Roberts at the plate, and he hits it in the air down the right field line, and it is going to drop in front of Kadire for a soft single. Long run from Michael, who was about 40 yards off the line. That'll bring up Lobatone with two gone. AT&T trivia question. Who are the three former Rockies, players or coaches, to have played in the Little League World Series and also a Major League World Series? I remember one of the more famous major leaguers who starred in the Little League World Series, Lloyd McClendon. Lloyd hit like five home runs and five at bats in the Little League World Series, and the other team just stopped pitching to him. <laughs> said, that, we're done. Well, you know, the other guy that was pretty good, the other guy that would, uh, he wasn't particularly very good, but his son was outstanding. Dante Jr. just went off at the Little League World Series. And Dante was coaching that ball club. Two and zero. Oh. That was the first hit by Roberts. You know, you mentioned the long run by Kadir. Well, you set up your defense to play against the way guy typically swings the bat. So Roberts had 15 hits prior to that. All had been to center field or left field. Nothing had been to the right side of second base. It's two and one on the switch hitting catcher Lobaton, a native of Venezuela. He's had a good road trip. Caught Friday night. Jose Molina caught yesterday. For Joe Madden, who's a former catcher. A lot of those guys running around in managerial circles in baseball. Mike Sosha, probably the most well known because of his long tenure in Anaheim. And of course, Joe Madden worked for Mike Sosha. Worked as a bullpen coach for a number of years and then uh, his bench coach. This is in the air to center field. Dexter drifting over. He'll make the catch. And Chassin is settled in. Three straight scoreless innings. Rockies will try to get after Alex Cobb. Tulowitzki will lead it off. Three to one. Rays.
Football on Route Sports is brought to you by the all-new Ford Escape. The smarter way to get there, Ford Escape, go further. By Comcast, advertise your business locally on the network's people watch. Go to ComcastSpotlight.com for details. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Celebrating little leaguers throughout our broadcast today. There you go. Oh, got a baby. A lot of gloves in the house today as well. 3-1 Tampa Bay leading. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Mark Stout, Troy Tulowitzki, Michael Kadire, Todd Helton, and uh, hopefully many more after that against Alex Cobb. Second time through the lineup for the Rockies. Colorado has two hits. A first inning base hit by Carlos Gonzalez and a second inning home run from Michael Kadire. Rockies have 106 extra base hits this year, which leads the National League. That ball one on Troy. He struck out swinging his first time up. Balls down and away, two and nothing on Tulowitzki. Rocky's got the big lead in last night's ball game, and Walt Weiss was able to take Troy out of the ball game and rest his legs the final couple of innings. Johnny Herrera played defensively at short. Three and zero. Oh. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. Where's your hat from last night? Uh, I left it in the locker room actually should have brought it up. Got a big response on that. Well we've been getting a few hats in the mail kind of looking forward to getting a few more hopefully. Well there's a there's a. A nursing student, evidently, George, who has a hat for you. Or is it? Well, it's. Um, I think we're going to send Mark Stout on a mission pretty soon. Three and one on Tulowitzki. And Troy hits it high and deep left field. Way back and gone. Make it three to two. Tulowitzki's seventh jack of the year. Oh, this lineup will get you. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. He didn't want to have to face Tulowitzki with Gonzalez on base. And he was able to get Gonzalez to pop out to left field. Well, obviously, there's a reason why on a 3-1 count. That ball has hit a long, long ways. Mike Shaw, Subaru, Super Bowl. You're going to see it get up into the air. Once up into the air and the drive by Tula Whiskey. See that full finish high and long by Tula Whiskey continues the drive of this baseball into the seats. Ball one on Kadir. Rockies within a run now. Two solo home runs. The man at the plate and the man who preceded him. Two and zero. Oh. Last night's victory over Tampa for Troy and company. First time the Rockies have beaten American League club at Coors Field in 11 tries. I mean that that mind-boggling to think about that. Also, if you go back to 06, the Rockies had the second most wins of any National League club against the American League. And that's after going 2-13 and 13 last year. Only the Mets are better and just slightly. Well, and, and again, you're talking about a club in, in 2007. Played great in interleague play. 2009, very good in interleague play. Both years they went to the playoffs. 2-1. And it's 3-1. and one. Nobody out. Todd's on deck. You know, the National League, Frazier, has not won the interleague battle since 2000 and 
three. Crazy. Three one. And a ground ball to short. Rodriguez throws out Kadire. One out. And that'll bring up Helton. We'll check in again with Mark Stout. Mark, what's cooking? Guys, big day here at the ballpark. Cinco de Mayo. We're talking Little League. And a big day at the box office on Friday and this weekend for the new movie Iron Man 3. Some of the players like Adam Adovino are into it. They're going to see it when they can. Made me think about Iron Men in the big leagues. And I'm talking about current Iron Men. And it starts with Prince Fielder. When you look at that current list, Fielder does not miss games. But what about with the Rockies in the franchise when you think over the years, who's played the most consecutive games for the Rockies? And here on Cinco de Mayo, guess who? Vinny Castilla played 300 plus straight games when he was a Rocky. George, anybody that you played with was like an Iron Man or a guy that you always wondered how they could actually play through injuries? Well, Madden, we played an awful yeah. lot. Um, you know, before he started having the back injury, he was out pretty much every day, it seemed like. Kirby Puckett was a guy that very rarely took a day off. Kid Herbeck, uh, you know, those guys played. And, and again, I think a lot of the stars of the game feel the responsibility, too, of the fan that, you know, it, let's be honest, it's not cheap to go to a major, li major league event, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, whatever it is. And, you know, you bring a family of four to the game, it's very important for that family to see Todd Helton, George to the whiskey, Gonzalez. These guys swing the bat. Michael Kadir sign an autograph and hang out uh, and be around these fans. I think that's uh, an obligation, and those fans uh, expect to see the player. And I think there's certain players in the game that really respect that. One and two on Helton. And Todd fouls this off, and it's going to get over the raised dugout. You know, Mark. Uh, our partner Jeff Hughes had played with a guy that had a pretty decent Iron, Iron Man streak. Yeah, that's no, that's Cal Ripken Jr. He played with the guy that had the yeah. Iron Man, not with that a <laughs> Iron Man. He had the Iron Man streak. Do you know who has the streak in the National League right now? No, oh, all time, all time, oh, all time. Just saw this when I was looking this up. Rose. Good guess. Sun plays in the Rockies organization. There's a base hit for help in the left center field. Son play Steve Garvey. Yeah, it's 2,000 plus. Yep, Steve Garvey. You know, that, that makes sense. And, and if you look at positions where it's possible, that, that's why the Ripken thing's ridiculous. We can play yeah, shortstop. Man, I mean, that's short, absurd. A little bit but, of you know, too. first base. Not that Got it's it. not not that it's not grueling to be out there wherever you are, but you know a little less so than playing in the middle of the diamond. Obviously, you'll never see it with a catcher. One out and one on. Rockies down by a run. Willene Rosario bounced to second his first time. Hey Doug, who backed up Johnny Bench with Cincinnati Reds for eight consecutive years? Look that up for me. Uh, Tracy Ringlesby, who I spent a lot of time with away from the ballpark. Uh, that. He was talking about it the other day. The guy played like 120 games in eight years. And backed up Johnny Bench. Played every day. It's like carrying a clipboard for quarterbacks. Exactly. Not a bad gig. Rosario popped out his first time. Moline last night 0 for 3 in a walk. Caught on Friday as well was 0 for 5. Well, Doug came up with Bill Plummer. That may be the guy, but he packed up for a long, long, long time. Don Warner, that's who it was. Going back to when Doug was growing up, spent some time in Ohio. This is a light shot right to Roberts. And at a ball. Two gone. That'll bring up Rutledge. Rutledge reached on an error by the shortstop Sean Rodriguez his first time. Look what's coming up. Dante Bichette's bobblehead day on May the 19th. 
be fun. Get your tickets now. 303 Rockies. Go to Rockies.com slash Bobble. First 20,000 fans on May the 19th will receive a 20th anniversary Dante Bichette bobblehead, courtesy of Root Sports. Misses George the last inning or so with Cobb have been more pronounced than they were earlier in the game. What, the, what that means, we'll find out. But. Off the plate, pitching away from contact. He's been burned with two long balls. But when he does miss, typically it's down. Some guys have a breaking ball that's a swing and miss pitch. That's that's only a a pitch that you see when. It's an 0-2-1-2 count type of situation. He can get back in a count with his curveball. And there's no question. I mean, he's got very good uh, confidence in being able to throw the curveball for a strike. Got Rutledge one and two here with a runner at first base and a couple of outs. We'll see which way he goes with it. Setting up for fastball away, outer half of the plate. Trying to get that running fastball. He misses, cuts right at the last second. Held up. And that run runs the count full, three and two. Tulowitzki, a home run to begin the inning. Todd Helton, a one out single. He's still at first base now with two outs. Start to offer, but didn't get all the way around on it. Three, two count. Be off with the pitch, and it's ball four. Well, three-two changeup only because the pitcher's in the on-deck circle. If I make a good pitch with the changeup, swing and miss, win-win situation. Otherwise, I'm taking my shot with the, the pitcher coming up, even though he swings the bat well. Chasin comes up. AT&T trivia question once again: Who are the three former Rockies players or coaches to play in a Little League World Series and also a Major League? World Series and the answer is Carney Lansford Charlie Hayes and out of Staten Island Jason Marquis. And Chassin fouls it back George in our direction and it takes one hop and for the one time the boot. for my one time I was ready you were ready only because a pitcher hit it. <laughs> yeah, they don't hit it as hard. Not going to be as hard. Chassin's already driven in a run this year. He'd love to drive in the equalizer here. You remember those old pitching meetings, George, and they go over a lineup, and, they, and then there's always a mention, hey, by the way, if so and so, the pitcher, you know, you. You can't just feed him fastballs, right. right? Right, absolutely you do. And you sit here and say to yourself, okay, what pitch do you have to make when you make it? You know, and a lot of times uh, some guys will build a strike-up ratio on this, strike-out ratio. They'll go right at the guy and try to spin a hard break the ball. You're not going to give it, put it on a platter for him. Two-strike count. A good eye by Chassin. Looking to save money by using electricity wisely? Find out how the little changes add up at TogetherWeSave.com, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative, delivering reliable power, energy saving tools, and more.
Rockies trailing 3-2 as they bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Trying to win this rubber game against Tampa. And a ground ball to the middle of the diamond. Rodriguez goes across. In the inning, the Rockies got two hits. The most notable of the hits, a Troy Tulowitzki home run. His seventh of the year. He's driven in 28 runs in 28 games. Two. So little leaguers in the house today as well on a Sunday afternoon. Rockies will have the day off tomorrow. Then the Yankees come in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then it's off to St. Louis Mo. Frazier's old stomping grounds. Cardinals playing good baseball. I love that game, George. You ever play that game? I have played that game. A little farther away, though. Oh, I'll tell you what. You can, hit, you can hit a lot of shots from that distance. Strike one on Sean Rodriguez. Eight, nine, and one. It's fifth inning. It's our Toyota talk inning. Let's see what questions are in store today. And this ball in the air to left field. Cargo will get there. Sure hands of Carlos Gonzalez. Rodriguez retired. Alex Cobb coming up. Please explain whip once more. Thanks, Bob. In Harlingen, Texas. You know what? My, uh, my wife's... Grandfather used to live down in Harlingen. Uh, whip is is walks plus hits per inning pitch. In other words, uh, you know, if you have a guy that's thrown nine innings and he's given up nine hits and nine walks in those nine innings, he'd have 18 divided by the nine innings. So it's 2.0. In other words, two base runners per inning pitch. The, like bait, the National League average is 1.34. Yeah, that's that's uh, exactly right. So, I mean, that's uh, one of those deals you look at, you try to watch. Is there a lot of traffic when he's pitching? Is he's not? Now, now coming in, and granted it's early in the season, coming into the ball game, not including today, the whip was under one for Chassin, which is, you know, just out of this world. Did Nolan get his grand slam ball last night? Grant wants to know. You know what? We have to check on that. I'm and, not sure. And I don't, we'll I don't try know to give you an answer not. before the end yeah. of the broadcast. Good slider, and it's a two-strike count on Desmond Jennings. Drew, did you play Little League Baseball? I, I absolutely did. In fact, I had, George, we were in the, uh, you know, the on the road to, if you will, Cooperstown. We didn't, or not, uh, not Cooperstown, Williamsport. And I you want to talk about tears? I, I hit a two run home run over the center field fence, Frazier. Yeah. Get around, you know, the kids all mobby and everything. And then they the kids walk away, and I'm starting to walk to the dugout. And, and the catcher walks over and he tags me. 
And the umpire goes, you're out. Come on. And I, I said, ow, oh, I, I hit it over the fence, right? He said, you didn't touch home plate. Really? Didn't touch home plate. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I was, uh, there, there were some water. Knowing you as I do, you got tossed. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, was in, that, was, that was later on in my that career. That didn't matter. That was, Early or late, I, doesn't matter. Yeah. You got tossed. Uh, no, I got tossed later on, but <laughs> I was older then. That was a good inning. How about seven pitches for Shasin? He's hit a groove. Rockies down a run. Top of the order when we come back. Just look back. First inning, a rough start for Shasin in his return from the disabled as James Lone, who kills the Rockies. You know that story. He drives in a run naturally. And then a wild pitch would score the second run. As the ball popped out of the glove of Shasin. And then Kelly Johnson drives in James Lone. 3 0 before the Rockies could get to the plate, but they started to chip away. They used the long ball. Michael Kadire with his seventh of the year. And then in the fourth inning, Troy Tulowitzki with his seventh of the year. And now, as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, it's a 3 2 ball game. Dexter Fowler, Nolan Arenado, Carlos Gonzalez against Alex Cobb. Cooney Lexus, where luxury has an address, coming to Greenwood Village in a matter of days. And that pitch outside ball one. Dexter is 0 for 2 with a couple of punch outs against Alex Cobb. And this ball driven left center field. Jennings on the move will get there. I'll tell you what, watching Jennings in the outfield reminds me an awful lot of Dexter Fowler. Guys that can really get a break on the baseball and go get it. He can do it. He can really do it. Playing straight away here, fastball away, hit well, slicing away from him. And he just outruns the baseball, makes that catch look easy, and it wasn't easy. You know, Jennings, George, went to went the junior college route out of high school, and he was a junior college All-American wide receiver. I know you're not surprised when I tell you that. I'm not surprised at all. He's a Look good at how broad his shoulders are, a little thickness up on the upper half. Arenado with a base hit to the left side. That's just paying attention to what's going on in the game with right handed hit hitters going to the plate. He spent a lot of first pitch curveballs. Nolan did a really good job keeping his hands back and just swinging at the ball when he's seeing what he could hit out of it and hit a nice base hit to left field. Now you're into the middle of the lineup where it's just not a whole lot of fun if you're facing the Rockies. I don't know if there is part of the lineup where you, where you can relax. There is cargo one for two single and a stolen base in the first fly ball to left field in the third 321 batting average six home runs. He's driven in 16. 
tying run at first in Arenado with one out. And for a lot of young pitchers, this is a, a big part of the ball game. You get into the fifth. Ooh, close. You get into the fifth, and you know you've got a 3-2 lead. You're trying to close out that last inning. And, then they, you know, once they get through the fifth with the lead, they seem to do okay. But that fifth inning, as it was last week for Cobb, he gave up four runs and four two-thirds against Kansas City. Got a pitch to hit there. Dexter Fowler and I were chatting at the clubhouse this morning, George, uh, about Arenado. I said, hey, pretty nice debut for the uh, kid. And he said, man, he started talking about his hands at third base. And I said, yeah, he finds the barrel a lot, too. He said, he barrels everything. Well, that and what I've been impressed by, you know, I started sitting and thinking. I was talking with Keith Schultz and Joe Diaz and guys for the ball game. You mentioned the leather. I'm trying to think of when the Rockies had a everyday third baseman that could play the way he played at, at third base. And the one we came up with was Jeff Cirillo. I mean, you got to go back that far. Well, the one I come up with, they gave a bobblehead away for him. Well, Vinny, too, also, but he was before him. I'm saying within the last, you know, this last eight, ten years, you know, this was the guy that played every single day. And, and you know, 15 and 7, you know, 15 and 95, drove in over 100 runs, hit doubles, and, and really played a very efficient third base. Yeah, I will say this about Garrett Atkins. Did, did nowhere close to the range that that Arenado has. He could flat hit. You know that. And if you hit it in around Garrett, he caught you, the you were out. He was yep. very accurate with his arm. I would agree. You know, we we're just sitting down there kicking around some names. I mean, obviously, Benny's the one that's the number one guy. But I was just thinking in the last seven, eight, nine, ten years, you know, a guy that was here for a period of time, over three years, four years playing a position, it's been a while. Two strikes on cargo. Boy, he's cops working on Arenado like he's Eric Young. And, and Nolan, as you guys get to know him, he's not a base dealer, folks. I mean, he does a lot of things well. Foot speed is not something he's known for. He's an average runner. He steals a lot of doubles. That's what he does. And Cargo gets enough to keep the at-bat alive. That's what I mean by that. Deck. He doesn't have to steal second because he's usually standing on second with a double. By the way, we, we had a question last inning during our Toyota Talk inning. It was a great question. Did Nolan Arenado get the grand slam ball? And we just heard from uh, from Nick Pyburn within the Rockies PR office they, that they did get the baseball for him. This ball up the middle, base hit. Arenado cut the bag, and he'll put on the brakes and stop at second. Second knock of the game for Gonzalez. Two aboard for the Rockies shortstop. to center field as a base runner you glance once and then now you're going to need to pick up Stu Cole. Two on, do not score in the fifth. We'll go to the sixth, three, two, Tampa Bay.
Here we go, cargo. Come on, Frazier. Here we go, cargo. Here we go. Yeah, well, so you got to pick one, right? Should have had him do for all, like, starting lineup. If there's more game, you don't know what's in store. <laughs> That's true. Matt Joyce, Evan Longoria, James Loney in the sixth inning, and the breaking ball is in there. Chassin has really settled in. Last inning, seven pitches through five innings, despite giving up three runs in an extended first inning, just 58 pitches for Chassin. 27 of those came in that first inning you're talking about. Do you know what that was? That was like a mini rehab start the first inning, right. and now, and now yeah. he's back I'm where he in. was. I'm settling in. And I'll tell you what, when it came time to match up bullpens, you know what? I'll match up with you. And that's typically what happens in that 6th, 7th, 8th inning. Two one on Joyce, and he's way over the top of a breaking ball. Terrific pitch by Chassin. Fastball situation. So a hitter's naturally sitting on the back leg, ready to uncork on a two one fastball, and you throw the breaking ball over it and throw it for a strike. That also tells you the maturity side of of Rosario behind the plate recognizing his pitcher's abilities and going to him when it when it's needed to go to it. That was one of them on a 2 1 county went breaking ball. Three and two on Joyce. A walk and a fielder's choice. 0 for 1. And he walked him again. Third walk allowed by Joe Lees. So are you the ultimate Rockies fan in the state of Utah? Show us why you're the ultimate fan by taking a picture through Instagram or Twitter and tagging it with a root fan UT hashtag. For official rules, visit Facebook.com slash Root Sports RM. Oh, George, I know you're eyeballing that oh, thing. Oh, I like a gnat now. Come on. Oh, we're going to get some hats at the yard now. They're all wanting monograph balls and stuff now. <laughs> Oh, and one on Longoria. Fly ball to right field. And he grabbed it into a 4 6 3 double play. And that's a strike. It's 0 and 2 See, on you know, the and, and, perennial all star. And Jim Armitrout's directing today, so he's hunting down an awful lot of these things. Kenny Miller, same thing when he's directing, hunt down the hats. And I always say people that wear funny hats is like the guys that take their shirts off and paint their team on their chest and stand up when it's 8 degrees outside in a football game. They get on TV. I think it's awesome. Got it. What a sequence there from Chassin as he punches out Evan Longoria first out in the sixth inning in a 3-2 ball game. Very good slider off of the plate. A little more velocity added to the slider on the Mike Shaw. Now watch as he goes to swing at this. If he hits it, it's off the very end of the bat. You've taken the, the power out of his hands and made a very good pitch. James Loney, he struck out looking in the fourth, an RBI single and a run scored in the first inning. Joyce at first, raised up by a run in the sixth. Three strikeouts in the game for Chassin. Uh, a 5'10 average over 16 games is, George, it's 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 Little League-like. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. Take that down. <laughs> it, it really is. That's almost ridiculous that you're able to hit like that. And it's Little League day. Runner going and a line drive off of Rutledge's glove and in the right field. I thought that was going to be a double play. Must have been knuckling. You know, that's the toughest thing on a guy when a ball does get squared up and hit right at you like that. 
if that thing's knuckling, it's moving all over the place. And, I, I mean, that ball looked like it had a little bit of rise and carry to it, too. That ball was hit hard. Josh will tell you, I mean, probably should have made the play on the baseball, but that ball was hit hard. So a base hit by Loney, first and third, and Kelly Johnson up. Seen through that hard sinker trying to get a ground ball and get out of the inning. One out, runners at first and third. Yeah, typically this year he's got 64.5% ground ball outs. He'd like to get one here. He did it earlier in the ball game, flip a double play and shorten the inning up. He did it in the third. Let's take a look at this uh, shot hit right at Rutledge off the bat. That ball looked like it jumped right at the last second. I don't know if it's knuckling or what it was doing, but you can see there just out of his reach. Well, that may have been what it is. Rutledge about two feet off the ground and hit off the tip of the glove. 2-0. And this is a broken bat, shallow fly ball, and it's going to drop. And a fourth run comes in. Kelly Johnson, his second RBI of the night. He had two last night. I should say of the day. And that's a big run, but the leadoff walk cost you. Trying to look at this more of a fastball type rotation on the ball. Got underneath the label. Broke the bat. You can see that on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl, and it just dumped into the outfield. You got to respect Kelly Johnson's power. So what you want to do is play a little deeper on a high fly ball. You can get a running start at that that fly ball and be able to position yourself to make a strong throw to the plate. So unfortunately, it gets dumped into the outfield. You got a 4-2 ball game. Jimmy Wright's done with his conference. He'll go back to the dugout. First and second with one out. Ryan Roberts at the plate. Hitting just a dollar five against right-handed pitching. 367 against left-handed pitching. Slider for a strike. Since 2010, this is another stat that may surprise you. The Rays, known for their pitching, are actually the big league's highest scoring offense on the road. Averaging just under five runs a game on the road since 2010. And they've done that despite hitting just 249. The Yankees next, Boston, the Angels, four American League clubs, and then the Cardinals. We always have uh, good offensive clubs. And the Cardinals today, a good offensive club on the road, George. They scored 10 runs at Miller Park and beating up the Brewers 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. We thank you again for texting in your questions last inning during Toyota Talk. For more answers to your questions, visit the Root Sports Facebook page at facebook.com slash rootsportsrm. Tracy Ringlesby will answer a bonus Toyota Talk question before the conclusion of the game. There's the Hall of Famer next to uh, Jeff Houston. There's Allison. There's Joel Platt. They're all here. And that knocked off the glove of Rosario. It goes all the way to the backstop. You almost thought it may have been a cross-up. 
Loney to third, Kelly Johnson to second. Well, and unfortunately now the base hit could really hurt you. See, that's just a big sinker. And that ball just took off and then it just sank and run. Look at this on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl right here. Look, he'll catch him right on the thumb. I mean, that ball moved a whole lot more than anticipating for Rosario. Now you got to pull the infield in. And on a 3 2 pitch, you'd love to see here's the punch out. And it's down the left field line. That'll score two. Roberts with a two run double. By the way, that uh, pitch by Chassin was ruled a pass ball. Fastball in. I mentioned earlier, he has only one hit to the right side of the infield. Everything has been on the left side of the infield. This is uh, going to add to those totals. Ball right down the left field corner. Two more runs in, and now you got a 6 to 2 ball game. Josh Altman, the left hander, starting to get loose in the Rockies bullpen. Jose Lobatone. And he pops it up, left side. Zulowitzki calling. Two outs. There's Josh. A fly ball to center field. Dexter's got it. Rodriguez retired. But in the inning, three runs for Tampa Bay. And now they have a 6 2 lead. Here at Coors Field, and the Cardinals and the Blue Jays from the Monarch Little League, they're now in the Root Sports Suite. They kind of made a little exchange. So I want to give you the all copy fun fact for the day, and we're going to give a little bit of love to Vinny Castilla on Cinco de Mayo. These are the Mexicans that have played for the Rockies franchise, and it goes in games played. It's first Vinny Castilla, and then second Jorge De La Rosa, who's actually appeared in exactly 100 games and I'm going to ask Kyle real quick who's on the Cardinals your favorite Rocky Nolan Arenado how about in the past Vinny Castilla Arenado and Castilla Castilla bobblehead day I asked Vinny if he knew what his average was on Cinco de Mayo Drew and George because I, I looked it up 385 350 14 for 40 in his career on Cinco de Mayo and then he says to me did I do any damage and I said, nah, double and a ribby, but no home runs. Oh, no damage. That's all he cared about. Damage, production.
But 350 on Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, well, when you're a middle of the order guy, yeah. that's what you care about doing damage. The bat fell off again. And Cuz did a lot of damage. Here's Vinny. He must have hit a home run, dropped the bat, took off running again. Here it is. Got it back. Hold on. Okay, bat's back in. It's pretty cool downstairs. There a lot of fans here very excited about getting this bobblehead of Vinny's as they were he wise. And then, of course, you've got coming up here very quickly uh, Dante Bichette's bobblehead. Coming up in a couple of weeks. Michael Kadire, a home run and a ground ball to short. Rockies now down by four runs. No swing. One and one count. Cobb at 85 pitches as he works here in the sixth inning. Rockies are 10 and 4 at home, 1 and 1 thus far in interleague play. After a wide turn, good job getting it back quickly, Kelly Johnson. And it's a leadoff single for Michael Kadire, his second hit of the ball game. After watching the Rockies this afternoon, stick around for Rockies Weekly. We'll recap the best of the week. Talk to uh, many members of the coaching staff as well. Rockies Weekly. We do it every Sunday after the ball game. Here's help. Ground ball to second and a line single to left center for Todd. Coming off today, the 15 day disabled list along with Shasin. You got to give Cobb credit. He has been as advertised, he's been able to pitch. Work himself out of whatever situations have arisen. Two runs, two solo home runs. The old adage is baseball typically you're not going to get beat by the solo home run. And the one thing that's one uh, I got back on a scouting report from a couple of National League scouts I called that had seen him pitch in Kansas City. And they said even though he didn't pitch well, he pitches. In other words, he's not overpowering with anything. He just moves the ball in and out, up and down. He'll mix in pitches, not afraid to throw behind it counts. Can make a pitch to minimize damage. And that shot to third, Longoria, and then airmail into the crowd by Ryan Roberts, and Helt will go to second on the air. So with one out, Todd in scoring position. And it'll bring up Willie Rosario. Well, you said airmail. That's a good way to put it. Roberts, two errors now on the season. And guess who's going into Roberts? Oh, Kadire. Listen, it's like a linebacker, George, a guy you don't want to get hit. Well, you got to remember by. something. A couple of days ago, he got into a couple of guys at second base, and one of them was Roberts. So, I mean, that's going to stay on your memory bank of who's at first base and who's coming at you. Watch this slide one more time. There's nothing dirty about it. It's a clean slide. He's just going right into him and popping up to make him aware of the fact I'm on top of. Him. Personal pride thing. You will not turn two with me being the lead runner. Look out, Stu Cole. Oh. 
Follow the Rockies on your phone or iPad with the MLB.com at bat 13 app featuring pitch tracking stats, highlights, and a whole lot more. Yeah, where Stu is stationed right now, a lot of third base coaches do this with a runner in scoring position, George. They do it, and it takes courage, man. It's not comfortable because he's about 70 feet away from a, a right-handed hitter with tremendous thump. Ooh, they say he went at first base, Gary Darling. I'm not sure about this one. You know, again, we draw that line across the top here. Did the bat go out in front of it? Then you start to look at that. That's kind of the eyeball they go by because they're right on that line. Looked like he held up. One and two. Rockies have struggled in this series now four for 26 with runners in scoring position. It's the fourth strikeout for Cobb. First time he struck a man out since the third inning. Josh Rutledge. Great on so many levels if Rutledge could come through here you chip away get another run and in all likelihood you push Cobb over a hundred pitches here in the sixth inning and maybe force the issue for Joe Madden he's sitting on 95 pitches and take the chance take your chances with that Tampa bullpen which has been uneven at best. Rutledge reached on an error by Rodriguez at shortstop and also a walk. McGee, Jake McGee, hard throwing left handers up for uh, Tampa, and Josh Outman continues to throw in the Rockies' pen. Chassin, for the moment, is on deck. There are two outs. That may be more show than anything else, because if his number comes up, he's not hitting. One and two. Gets to that where he does come up. Brignan, I would think, would be the guy to take the swing, the long ball swing. You got Tori Alba, Herrera, Young, and Pacheco on the bench. That, to me, would be the guy you'd put up there to try to see if he can hit a three run home run against his former team. Yep, there's Reed. And if the outs made here, you'll see EY leading off next inning. And Rutledge strikes out. So the Rockies leave a runner at second base in the sixth. We move to the seventh. Tampa Bay leading six to two.
Rockies trailing as we go to the seventh inning. And Alex Cobb closing in on 100 pitches will hit for himself here. It'll be 9 1 and 2. Desmond Jennings, Matt Joyce to follow. And Shasin remains out there. The pitch count at 80. And Cobb lines at the center field. Pretty good swing. Let's check in one more time with Mark Scott. Mark? Well, Debbie is here. And uh, Debbie, I heard that you have a hat for George. Yes. He can have my mortarboard. You know what I was wondering? It's cap and gown with the tassel. Yes. It's a, what's it called? It's a mortar board. Okay. Now you just graduated. Yes, I did from, from? Regis University. And what was your major? Um, I have a bachelor of science in nursing. But that's you know that's a memento. You don't want to keep that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I want a job. You want a job, George? You want it? I'm all in. All right. You kidding? Congratulations, Debbie. I am so Thanks proud of you. Way to go. George says congratulations. Ask him ah. your, what's your question. Uh, George, what are you going to give me for this? What do you want? What do you want? Uh, tickets behind home plate. <laughs> tickets I don't behind have that kind of power. Okay, I need a visit to the Veterans Administration Hospital for our vets. Here, well, that would be easy. I would think we could probably get that arranged. I might even go with you. I would like to do that. Going to work on that. And I'd Thanks, like to, and I would like to go with her if that if we get that worked out. I'd like that to would go be with you. Neat. Okay. If you can set that up. I can. Excellent. Congratulations Congra from all of us. See, I'm right. Yeah, I'm, I'm really included. proud of you. The, hey, G George, you don't get the tiara. That's fine. I'm just. Okay. I'm so proud of her for what she accomplished today. Yeah. Tell her that, Mark. Actually, George was confused. He thought that's what he did get the tiara. No, George is not getting the tiara. They say congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. That's wonderful. All right, we'll add it to the collection. Well done, Fraze. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to set up a new closet in, in our. In no, our we're gonna start sticking the stick pens to the here. walls. We're gonna stick them to the wall. Yeah, that would be good. Sam, you're getting get, cold. I got a hat coming get, for yeah, you. We got to get a hat for Sammy. He hasn't seen hair longer than I have. Nice catch by Helt to God. Matt Joyce at the plate. Couple of walks. 0 for 1 overall, and this is a fly ball to left center field. It's going to be a six pitch inning. Four shot scene. Now the Rockies have nine outs to work with offensively, trailing by four runs. Middle of inning number seven, as is our custom on Sundays. We stick around for a rendition of God Bless America. Enjoy, everybody. Please direct your attention to the field for a special recognition. The Colorado Rockies are proud to host and honor those who sacrifice on behalf of us all. With us on the field today is Staff Sergeant Charles Drake II. Staff Sergeant Drake has been enlisted in the Army for nine years and is returning from his third deployment to the Middle East. He is currently a member of the 349th PSYOP Company at the Fitzsimmons Army Reserve Center. Staff Sergeant Drake is third generation Army. His grandfather and namesake was in World War II, and his father is a 22-year retired Vietnam veteran. Joined on field today by his wife, mother, and father, please give a warm Coors Field hero's welcome to Staff Sergeant Drake and all of our nation's brave men and women, as well as the families of our heroes. We thank you for your sacrifice to our great nation. Fans, please rise as we honor our great country by the performance of God Bless America. Performing God Bless America today, representing the United States Navy at Buckley Air Force Base, is Petty Officer Mark Stallings. Please welcome Petty Officer Stallings and join him by singing along to God Bless America.
McDonald's new premium McRap. I'm loving it. Rockies were down 3 0. Michael Kadire hit a long home run, 418 feet of seventh of the year, 3 1. Troy Tulowitzki on a 3 2 pitch hit one out, his seventh of the year. And then in the sixth inning, Kelly Johnson, a blue single to drive in a run. And then two more would come across on this double by Ryan Roberts, and the Rockies are down 6 2 now. In the bottom of the seventh inning, 9 1 and 2, Eric Young Jr. will hit for Chassin. And it's a 1 and 0 count coming up. Here's the pitch from Alex Cobb, and that's in there 1 and 1. EY has started the last couple of ball games. Yesterday he went 3 for 5. Scored a couple of runs. Junior 0 for 7 as a pinch hitter this year. Looking to turn that around. Not on this. Not a this at bat. 0 for 1. And Dexter Fowler will come up. 0 for 3 today. If you're over 21, and you are one of the first 20,000. To walk into Gates next Tuesday, you're going to receive an adult baseball cap, all courtesy of Coors Light. That's right. Tickets still available for the Yankees games. But make sure you make that phone call today and be a part of Tuesday's telecast because then if you are, or Tuesday's ball game, you'll be uh, one of the first 20,000 and 21 and over. You'll get a Rockies baseball cap sponsored by Coors Light. Slowly hit to the right side. It's a good play by James Loney, and he flipped to Alex Cobb. Too quickly gone in the Rocky seventh. I'll bring up Nolan Arenado, a base hit to left in the fifth inning. He's one for three. If your auto glass is damaged, your windshield's damaged, call Safe Light Auto Glass at 303 287 5000. You can visit them online at safelight.com. Curveball's high, ball one. Curveball's what he pulled down the third baseline for a base hit in his last at bat. And this ball's driven to deep left field. It's got a chance to get on out, and it will. Third home run of the week for Nolan Arenado. Kid, you can't get called up to the next league. There ain't one. We have mom, dad, very excited to watch this because uh, he's been watching it a long time and develop in what this is. What it will be for a number of years. Hopefully, another breaking ball. Mike Shaw, Subaru Supermo, didn't flinch on this one. It is gone and long and deep, and that's going to be all for the young right-hander Alex Cobb as he gives, it gives up his third run of the ball game. It is now six to three after the home run by Nolan Arenado. Seventh game of his big league career. He's got three home runs and eight RBIs, and he's hitting over 300. Pretty good stuff. Jeff Francis telling me oh, it should be this easy. Six three back in a moment after the pitching change.
defense this afternoon. Kadire, Tulowitzki, and now Arenado. Jake McGee is on, hard throwing left hander for Tampa Bay. Two outs in the seventh inning. Cargo, two singles, three at bats today. Second appearance of the series for McGee. And bunt attempt's going to go foul. Last year, Jake McGee was the second hardest throwing lefty out of the bullpen in baseball. He averaged 95 7 on his fastball. The only guy who threw harder was Cincinnati's Araldus Chapman, who averaged 97 plus with his heater. Actually, just a tick under 98. One and one. What makes McGee so valuable to Joe Madden? Is that last year against right handed batters, they hit 098, 11 hits in 112 at bats. Amazing. Two and one. And George, you go back to 1974 when they started really tracking this stuff. That was the best a left hander had done against righties in that period. The next best was Billy Wagner, a 128 batting average. Right. Wagner was on that list twice. 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. A former fifth round pick. And with a 96 mile an hour fastball, he strikes out Cargo. In the inning, Arenado goes deep again, six to three. Sports is brought to you by a honey smoke fish company. Secrets in the fire. It's a ready to eat superfood. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Check the Comcast game summary on Little League Day on Root Sports. 6 3 Tampa as we go to the eighth inning. The hits are all even. Tampa Bay three in the first and then three in the sixth inning. Chassin. Settled in two through five and actually threw a terrific seventh inning as well in his return to the rotation. Josh Outman's out there and his first pitch against Evan Longoria is in there for strike one. Last three outings for Outman, five innings pitch, two hits, no walks, a strikeout.
That game summary again brought to you by our friends at Comcast. Advertise your business locally on the networks. People watch. Go to ComcastSpotlight.com for details. was sent down to double-a a year ago he went down and he started and I think the one thing he realized even though he'd had success with the Oakland Ball Club before the Rockies got him in the trade his ability to understand hitters his ability to make pitches he was a hard throwing lefty that could throw it in the mid 90s great gift but being have the ability to be able to throw secondary stuff behind the counts make pitches down in zones when behind the counts and that was a good example. Three, three, one count. Got a very good hitter in Longoria up at the plate, and he threw a good sinking fastball that was 90 miles an hour. Yeah, lead off walk. Not what you want. I'll brag about no walks in the last five innings. Well, I got Debbie's hat up in the booth. Very proud of her to be uh, graduated. The only time I ever wore one of these, 1972 Hillcrest High School. Keep so, did Mike, do I have it on the right side, or do you know? Well, you don't say know, if do we you? color these crimson, we could say this is your OU, the, the one no. that No, but then, this, one, this, this one, I think I got it on the right side. I think. I don't know. Do you know? What's that? Which side you put this on when you graduate? Well, when you graduate, you flip it to the other side. But do you, what if you started already you flip it to this side? Well, that's you're going back for more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the middle, you're undecided, yeah. mom and dad, and it, I want to just stick around college, but uh, I don't want to work. It was, it was that West, huh? Western Civ. Let me ask it was this. the I Western Civ this. class you were supposed to take so that you never did. If you put it in the middle, is that mom and dad, I want to stick around longer. I just don't want to go to school. I like school. I like what comes with school. I just don't right. want to go to school. Yeah, that, that's when you yeah. spend too much time at happy hour. Yeah, seven, eight hours of... Uh, Seven, eight years to get through college? Why not? I tell you what, your IQ went up like 30 points. When I, you put it's that thing amazing on. how that happened. That's a base hit to right. Left for on Loney. Left. Yeah, left on left, James Loney. I don't see a whole lot of that because I left handers. Will, listen, James is a nice kid, but, I, but I'm looking forward to seeing him leave. Left handers, two for 13 now against Alvin. Including that hit right there. He had three hits last night. He's got yeah. three more today. I agree. Kelly Johnson coming up. And it's not just the Rockies this year. James Loney, since his slow start, is hitting close to 600. In fact, if he would qualify. He was a couple of bats short of qualifying in the American League for the top hitters. He would have been second to Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera was hitting 390 at the start of the day, reigning triple crown winner in the American League. And now, you know, Loney was hitting 380 coming in with the three hits. It's moving close to 400. He's at 398. Last 17 games, he's now hitting 528. Absurd. Kelly Johnson's hurt the Rockies too the last couple of days. Four ribbies. One and two. It's a wonderful crowd at Coors Field on a Sunday bobblehead Vinny Castilla bobblehead day Cinco de Mayo and Fastball way up high and it's Gonna move the runners up Longoria to third Loney to second 
what appeared to major. I thought maybe it was a slider. He just tried to throw too hard. When he did, he got around it, didn't finish it, didn't get over the front leg, didn't elevate, stayed up. See, I turned that wrist on that inside, trying to get around it and throw it. And a pass ball given to Willene Rosario. Tough call. Infield in, nobody out, and Johnson a strikeout victim. So Outman punches out Johnson. Ball got by, but right by him in a heartbeat. Good pitch, Josh out. Longoria third and average runner. Ryan Roberts a pull hitter at the plate. Tulowitzki possesses one of the strongest left side arms in baseball and for that reason he's moved back probably 12 feet onto the dirt off the grass usually when it's infield in you'll see those short stops right on the cut of the grass but Tulowitzki can give himself more east west range because he trusts the arm and also you knows the guy at third he was not a flyer. Well, you compute all that, and that's how you figure out exactly where you'll position yourself. One and one to count. Outman's got to find a way to keep this a three run game here in the eighth inning. Ground ball to Tulowitzki. Longoria stays on the bag. Two outs. And that'll bring up switch hitting catcher Jose Lobaton. 0 for 3 today. What's next is brought to you by CenturyLink. Tomorrow will be a day off for the Rockies, and after the day of rest, here's the matchup on Tuesday as the Yankees come to town. Jorge De La Rosa against Hiroki Kuroda. And Kuroda is one of the big reasons why the Yankees, despite numerous injuries to position players, are playing good baseball. Why they're well above 500. They started the day at 18 and 11. Uh, they're now 18 and 12. Oakland beat them in the Bronx. That is a base hit. And it's going to score two runs. Just over the outstretched glove of Josh Rutledge, and it's eight to three Tampa. Obviously, trying to keep what you already have intact. Alpha got to two outs. They got a fastball up, got on the hands, and a softly hit ball to the right side. Second time that the Rays have capitalized on leadoff walks. They did it in the sixth when they put three on Chosin. They've done it here against Alvin, a leadoff walk to put two runs on. John Rodriguez 0 for 2 and a walk outside. It's 1 and 1. And this is popped up. Short right field. Rutledge makes the catch. In the inning, a walk. A single and then ultimately a two run single after the pass ball and it's 8 3.
Tampa Bay with an 8-3 lead over the Rockies. We go bottom eight, and Todd Helton is due up third in this inning. Jamie Wright, you know the name from Rockies history. He's now with the Rays, and I got Jamie, who knows Todd very well, to talk about number 17. There's no one in this game that I've ever known or played with that I'm more proud of than, than Todd Helton, and that's... I'm gonna start crying just thinking about it. He uh, just what a great player, what a what a great person, you know. And um, you know he's uh, he'll go down as he'll go down as the best ever player. And those two go back to instructional league, Double A with the New Haven Ravens, and then here with the Rockies from '97 to '99. Drew George. You know, I will say on another note, you second obviously what what Jamie said about Todd, but Jamie writes, it's always a joy. To visit with Jamie and to see how long his careers lasted, and I think what you, you reported it the other day, Mark, I think it's six, seven, eight straight years he's gone uh, as an undrafted, or excuse me, as a as a minor league free agent uh, to camp without a guarantee, and he keeps making baseball clubs and he keeps having good, effective seasons out of the bullpen. He's one of the nicest guys in the game. That was pretty neat last night. I ran into his wife and three beautiful children downstairs. Uh, as they're leaving the ballpark, I said, I don't like looking at this. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, you guys are getting so old on me. You know, when the kids come walking out, and you got three kids with you, and one of them's like 10. It's just not something you want to keep looking around at. I mean, you're kind of like, come on, really? Unbelievable. Keep pouring water on them, they grow. Joel Peralta, former Rocky, is on. He appeared Friday night. Chulowitzki could die or help. Rocky's down by... Five runs here in the eighth inning. But I would just mention very quickly his wife Marnie, the daughter Presley, a couple of sons, uh, Jeff and Cash. Peralta, when he left here, he always threw the split, but not as prominent. Now he's got a very good one. He'll throw it in any counts, any situations. Somebody battled around the minor leagues back and forth until he finally rested, found a good home here. The Rockies helped kind of. Throw him out there to what people see what he could do you know, when he got called up here to the Rockies 2009. Seemed like the other night, George, he threw about 60% split fingers. Well, he's trying to get downward movement. He doesn't want that thing elevated in this yard. Two balls, two strikes. And a line shot base hit to right. And it's bobbled for a moment. We're down by five runs to Lewitsky doing the shrewd thing and staying at first base. Who wants tacos, fans? If you'd like to receive text message alerts when the Rockies do score seven, as they did last night or more, for the Rockies taco special, text the keyword TACO to 720-720. Message and data rates may apply. And when the Rockies do produce a big night, Taco Bell, along with Root Sports, will donate $250 to the Colorado I Have a Dream Foundation. Kadire, two hits and three at-bats. Rockies need a whole bunch of hits in a row. the seventh year in terms of service time in the big leagues. That's a strike. He's been with the Angels, the Royals, the Rockies, the Nationals, and his third year with Tampa Bay. And for a guy that is effective like Peralta has been, but not necessarily a star closer, this is the life of a reliever. George, you, uh, you lived it. You become uh, a guy that has a number of addresses. That's a base hit to left. You rarely see a setup guy stay in one place for 70. Yeah, it's usually about three years and out. I mean, that's uh, just kind of the way it works. 
typically you work so many innings many times you have that down here the clubs try to get away from you before you have the down here coming out on the split right there boy good shot guys on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo you're gonna see this ball rotate rotate remember Kadir hit a split out earlier that's a good pitch for Peralta and a great job of hitting a great job of hitting by Kadir Todd Helton on the year well he's hitting a mere 500 that's right rally Todd hitting a mere 500 with runners in scoring position seven for 14. great to see that familiar banner or banners out in extreme left center field nobody out two on Rockies down eight three Rosario behind Todd Helton Todd one for three Ton of confidence being shown right now, obviously because of uh, what Peralta has been able to do. Their bullpen's not going at all. The Rockies do have a little action in their bullpen. Uh, for the simple fact, as you work your way down this lineup, you got to be prepared to hit for the pitcher. Adam Ottavino, the right-hander, warming up down in the bullpen for the Rockies. There's. Boy, he's uh, been lucky. I mean, it's been great to watch him get over here with the Rockies and jump out and do the job that he has been able to do for them, given an opportunity on an everyday basis to work out of the bullpen. Two strikes on help. And that's the first out of the inning. He got after this fastball looked like 180 after seeing all the splits and then he put it right in the perfect location. I mean, you're going to see this ball. Watch right there. That late tail and sink. Willeen 0 for 3. Pop out, line out, strike out. Willeen won for his last 16 at the plate. So he's due to bust out. Seven home runs. He's driven in 19. Youth Baseball Camp at Coors Field. That's right. Right here at Coors Field will be on July the 23rd and 24th this season. Visit the Rockies community page to learn more about this. Yeah, hope to see you there, young man. Rutledge with two gone. Runners at first and third. Reed Brignac come, has come out in the on-deck circle. Rodriguez. A couple of singles early. Rockies do not score. 8 3 as we go to the ninth.
Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By StubHub fans, next time you plan a trip to Coors Field, head to StubHub where you can get to find great seats and earn great rewards. And by Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo customers get your 2 for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies, Wells Fargo Bank, member FDIC. 8-3 is the score, ninth inning at Coors Field, Tampa Bay is ahead by five. The Toyota postgame show will immediately follow, and Joel Klatt has some of the details. That's right. Uh, some of those details are as follows. Risky business today. Runners in scoring position, again, a problem for Colorado, like it was in game one against Tampa Bay. We'll talk about that on the Toyota postgame show. Plus, no Fiesta on Cinco de Mayo so far. Hopefully the Rocks can come back, but as of right now, the Fiesta has yet to materialize. Drew? All right, Joel, we appreciate it. Thank you. As we go to the ninth inning, Outman continues on. Was that gentleman here yesterday? George? Yes. Well, somebody with that hat was here. Luke Scott's going to pitch hit for Joe Madden in this ball game. Scott, uh, his DH primarily will swing the bat as a DH, also as a pinch hitter, getting his second shot at pinch hitting duties. Got the left-hander Ramos warming up slowly, and Jamie White right, the right-hander. Two and zero. Oh. Base hit for Scott. Second left-hander to get a hit off of Altman. Ever prior to that, two for twelve. Shasin's line: seven innings, six runs, five earned, eight hits. He walked three and struck out three. Eighty-six pitches. And there were there were a lot of really good innings by Shasin where you. Basically saw what we've been looking at all year long. I think the first inning. You understand the, the hiccup there because he'd been out for a couple of weeks. I don't care how much of preparation you do in bullpens and game he threw down an extended spring. It's different at this level. As you oh, well I know, George. Yeah. Oh, sure it is. Well, you just mentioned the three decks, a loud crowd Sunday afternoon. It's the Tampa Bay Rays. It's not. Uh, you know, some extended game against the, the Giants with a bunch of 17 year old kids. A little different atmosphere. I hated pitching in minor league games after I've been in the big leagues. These guys are just up there hacking. They're all big league pitcher. Whack, whack. And you're like, okay, I've had enough now. <laughs> you actually are working on things and they're teeing off on you. Two strikes on Matt Joyce. The line for Alex Cobb was on the plus side. Six and two thirds, three runs, eight hits, a walk, and six strikeouts. He allowed three solo home runs to Dyer, Tulowitzki, and Arenado. And the strikeout of Matt Joyce. Two outs. Big bender. Outside corner. Late, late snap on the baseball. Mike Shaw, Subaru, Super Mo, watch Rosario as he goes out to get this baseball. And you can see the swing by Joyce, not even close. The end of the bat wasn't even close to the baseball. Want to know on Evan Longoria. Tulowitzki it's short. Tulowitzki is going to throw him out by 30 feet on a ball off the bat that Longoria had to believe was a hit and see if they say anything to each other as they go by. Two good friends. 
Well, we're related to you if they do. Good play by Tulo. We'll go to the ninth, eight three. Those kids want a rally, and the fans here, close to 40,000, want to see a rally. Reed Brignac will lead things off. He'll pinch hit for Josh Outman. And there's Jamie Wright. We just heard from him on Todd Helton. And Jamie will pitch the ninth inning for Joe Madden. Rockies trailing 8 to 3. It'll be Brignac, Fowler, and Arenado initially. Brignac had a simpler role with Tampa Bay that he has now with the Rockies. An occasional start, but primarily a guy that pinch hits, double switch guy later in games. Well, you can expect a heavy, 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 heavy sinker. National League scoreboard top of nine Padres at home ahead of the Diamondbacks five to one Venable and Gorko homer Jerko excuse me home runs for San Diego Gorius saw the disabled hit a home run for Arizona Giants Dodgers later on tonight the uh, Giants in first place along with the Rockies have won five straight one in extra innings against the Dodgers late last night here's the two one two and two. Braves beat the Mets 9 to 4. Freddie Freeman a home run is second. David Wright is fifth in the loss for the Mets. Nationals improved to 17 and 15. They beat the Pirates 6 to 2. The Pirates are 17 and 14. That was Gio Gonzalez getting the win there. He's 3 and 2. Cardinals over the Brewers 10 1. And Brignac doesn't realize that foul tip was held. Well, and I think he thought it hit the dirt after he fell, tipped it. We have a point. Got to look again. No. No, he caught it. Nope, it did. He, he caught, caught it. it. Yep. Reds beat the Cubs 7 4. 
Matt Latos is now 3 and 0. Beat Edwin Jackson who's 0 and 5. Way inside on Dexter. Marlins beat up the Phillies 14 to 2. They got a boatload of runs against Roy Halladay who dropped to 2 and 4. American League. Bottom of nine Orioles leading the Angels eight to four out in Anaheim. The woes for the Angels continue. One and one that will be their 20th loss. Mike Trout has hit his fifth for the Angels. J.J. Hardy Manny Machado. Home runs number five as well for Baltimore. Tigers in the bottom of the eighth beating up the uh, Astros nine nothing. Prince Fielders hit his eight for Detroit. Twins beat the Indians four to two. A's over the Yankees who are coming to town five to four in the Bronx. Two one pitch. Two and two. Blue Jays beat the Mariners ten to two. Brandon Morrow got the win. Royals are 17 and 10. They won at Kaufman. 6 5 over the White Sox in 10 innings. Jamie Wright with a 2 2 pitch to Dexter Fowler. And the Rangers beat the Red Sox today in Arlington 4 to 3. Nelson Cruz for Texas is seven. Moreland is fourth for Texas. David Ortiz is fourth. David Ross is fourth for Boston. Texas won it with a run at the bottom of the ninth. Three two. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by. The authority of the Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. And Dexter's 11 game hitting streak likely is over. Two outs in the ninth inning. Expect Jamie Wright to get strikeouts anymore when he comes in. Expect the ball to be in play, but he has struck out Brignac and Fowler back to back. Rockies have 10 hits, and Tampa Bay has 11. Tampa Bay's committed two errors. The Rockies have committed an error, yet, and the Rockies have hit three home runs, but Tampa has the eight runs. They have not hit a ball over the wall. And yet on the scoreboard, it's you know, it's lopsided. 8-3 in front uh, in favor of uh, Tampa. Arenado hit a home run in his last at bat. He also has a single today, two for four. His family looking on. What a great week for that family. Yeah, an average at 333 now for Nolan Arenado. Well, that one pitch that Jamie Wright has added the last couple of years has been the hard cutter. A couple of strikeouts on that hard cutter here in ninth. Two zero on Arenado. Even though he's been in the big leagues for a week, he's already third among National League rookies in home runs. Evan Gaddis has seven with Atlanta. AJ Pollock has four for Arizona, and then Nolan with three. Yeah, Eaton, the center fielder, went out on a rehab and. Uh, Atlanta catcher McCann has gone out on a rehab. So both of those guys that are rookies, man, their playing time may get a little diminished when these regulars come back. Larry Gaddis has swung it. We'll probably have to find some time for him. But George, you're right. Uh, McCann is set to come off the disabled list tomorrow. And that Braves team, 18 and 12. 
Jamie Wright strikes out the side of the ninth inning and Tampa Bay wins the ball game on Sunday eight to three and they take the series two games to one. Cobb gets his fourth victory against two defeats and Jolie Chassin loses for the first time this year. Today's Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game is brought to you by Jimmy John's. And you have to tip your cap to Alex Cobb. He gave up the three solo home runs. But when there was some traffic, he was able to get a punch out or a ground out. He controlled the strike zone for most of the afternoon. Eight hits, six and two thirds, but just the three solo home runs. And he struck out six, allowing only one free pass. It was a strong performance by the 25-year-old Floridian. Again, the final score, Tampa has defeated the Rockies 8-3 on a Sunday afternoon. Stick around, the Toyota Post Game Show is up next. Thanks for joining us.